All right. Welcome back to Sister Brunch here at the Essence Film Festival. We have had an amazing time meeting, just phenomenal, impactful filmmakers. And these two are no different. We have Creighton and Letitia. Letitia Guillory, I will say that on uh, season five of the podcast, we had Yamoria Wright on. And she talked about how important you've been to her career. So I just wanted to plant that seed and say thank you on behalf of Yamoria and all of us, because I've heard how much you do. So I just want to say thank you. And we're proud to have you on. I appreciate that very, very much. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to serve. Ah, I love it. So um, Creighton, Letitia, what are you doing here at the Essence Film Festival this year? We just had a great, great uh, reading of our screenplay, Hound Dog. And Hound Dog, it's... Uh, is something that we've been working on for quite some time, you know, and we just had this phenomenal reading that actually starred Lance Nichols in our wow. role of Don Roby. Oh, my so goodness. It, it was very exciting. You know, this is a project that is a neo-noir crime drama thriller with music uh, set in the 1950s based on true events. It tells the story of Don Roby the founder of Peacock Records that would go on to be Duke Peacock Records and many, many other labels, and also Evelyn Johnson, his right hand. And, you know, it is a conversation about gender equity and a woman who made a different choice in the 1950s to want to, you know, pursue a career in entertainment. Um, At the same time, we have this man, you know, success cost all of us, and, and Hound Dog really looks at that. And uh, Johnny Ace is killed under mysterious circumstances at intermission. This is the largest concert of his life. And unfortunately, in real life, it really would be the end. Um, And that is where we begin our story. How did you learn about this story and decide to? Yes. It's interesting. Uh, The owner of Peacock Records was my great uncle, Don Rowe. Amazing. And uh, what's so significant about it, uh, Don um, was... Um, he, he he laid the foundation for what would become like Motown. And at this particular time in America, he uh, had all of the top artists uh, of the day. And if he didn't have them signed to his roster, there was also another business called Buffalo Booking that had all the, 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 the headliners of the day. Okay. Okay. So that was a business that was competing with him or that was the same? The same thing. He owned that. He had Peacock what? Records and he had Buffalo Booking. And he also had a numerous other businesses as well for the black community. Yes. Exclusively. So was this a story that was passed down in your family and it that's how you knew? a story that was somewhat passed down in my family. <laughs> you know, um, my family, the Robies, they first came to Houston, um, like in the late 1800s, to, and my great, great, great grandfather was assigned to treat the uh, African-American community that was gathering there from slavery and all the trauma and everything. So his grandson, great grandson was my uncle, and he had kind of a seedier kind of like uh, life. In Makes for ways. a good movie. Makes, Makes for, for you know, movie. we need some. <laughs> but he was an excellent like businessman. He learned yes. and he really provided like just a uh, great culture. And a great opportunity for Black people to, like, really celebrate life. How did the two of you meet and connect on this project? So Creighton and I have known each other most of our lives. Um, For a long time, we didn't realize that. So uh, we have very close family friends, one of whom is my godmother. And I was always at their house growing up. But that's Creighton's cousin's. So we were probably at birthday parties and stuff together yes. since we were little kids, but we did go to the high school for performing and visual arts in okay. Houston together. Okay. So we've known each other since high school. And um, yeah, that's, you know, and I, I, he moved to New York first. I came later. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been rocking and rolling ever since. I love it. And here, rocking and rolling all the way to Essence. Absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful. Absolutely. And it's awesome to be at Essence, you know. I can't think of a better city than New Orleans to do our first public reading ever of this script. Uh, You know, New Orleans is the home of Black music, very much so. Yes. And to be able to talk about Don Roby and Evelyn Johnson and Clarence Gate Mount Brown and Big Mama Thornton and B.B. King and Lil Richard and Johnny Ace and more and Bobby Blue Bland, to talk about all of that in the context of these are people who are artists who are making their way. It is not about, oh, yes, we know the songs, we love the music, but do you know what it costs them to do Mm, all of that? Yes, yes. To have that kind of agency and to have an artistic home that uh, 
allowed that kind of agency, you know, we're still fighting for that. So it's a it's a big deal. Can you tell us we we find that one of the conversations we all don't have enough is around financing, how you fundraise and then or even even starting with budget, right? Understanding your budget. You've got a period piece. Are you already starting to think, especially because you read it here and are you pitching it and therefore are you starting to think budget and then fundraising and how, what's the plan for that? Well, I can say that uh, we've had such support already in the development process. Oh, uh, we great. were funded a little bit uh, through the Tribeca Film Institute. Yes. We, uh, yes. we uh, were a part of the Writers Guild of America Harlem Writers Workshop. Wait, there's yes. a Harlem workshop for yeah, writers for the WGA? A, I had no idea. It, WGA is no longer associated with it, but its origin was that. That's okay. where it started. So okay. yeah, Harlem okay. uh, uh, Dramatic Writers Workshop has existed for almost 20 years. And uh, Hound Dog absolutely was developed through that workshop uh, with some phenomenal mentors. And tell them about the, the uh, programs oh, you've been... So, you know, we also have, um, you know, back in the before times, kind of, uh, the uh, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery 150 project. Uh, Hound Dog was a 150 project. I'm a 150 artist. I'm that alum. <laughs> yes. And they, you know, it was beautiful to have someone really get the vision, have a team of people get the vision and, and you know, give you a little grant to say, okay, let's, you know, what do you want? Your lookbook? Or do you want to work with a writing coach? You know, you can do whatever you want. But the intention was always to package the pitch or to help you get to the next step. So and the I, producers thing that you're a part of too. Oh Women's my thing. God, Black House. So I'm a Black House. <laughs> yes. I'm a okay. <laughs> yes. So yes. Ready to take it off to right, 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 right. Beautiful. Right. So, yes. Okay. Yes. So Black yeah. House. Okay. Uh, a, uh, Black House multicultural producers fellow um, oh. from a year before last. So and Congratulations. Hound Dog was the project they chose. So you know we've we've garnered some support. Um, and we do have an idea of budget. And yes, we, if you're paying attention, <laughs> we are actively looking for wonderful collaborators and go. partners to bring this project to fruition. We are looking for a studio. We are looking for a production company. And uh, we're ready to rock and roll if you all are. I love it. Shout out to Bricks and Diamond of the Black House Foundation. Yes. We love oh, Bricks and <laughs> And also Bricks and got some money. So Bricks and get a little private equity. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. You know, I love it. all the rest of it. So, um, you know, we, we're uh, we're in a great place with the story. And yeah. Do you mind, and because I know you, you have experience here and not everybody does, when we're talking about a period piece and we're talking about music, we're talking about something that's going to be on the expensive side. Yeah. So to your point, you're really out here pitching to studios. I mean, the goal is, um, do you have a ballpark of what you would like? What's your pie in the sky budget to make this film? You want me to say? Yeah. Yes, so I wouldn't say pie in the sky because it could always be higher depending on who's attached to it. But we're looking at a film that's from, you know, 20 to 25 million. Beautiful. Because to be yeah. able to really do it justice, to really serve the story, serve the visual of the story, it could definitely be higher, I'm sure, depending on who's attached to it. Yeah. You know, because they're going to want what they want and they should have their Twinkies and everything else. Have, you mean Twinkie Bird as a casting director? I don't ask that. I'm just, I'm the, I mean, season four deaths, season four deaths. We love ourselves some Twinkie. Let's put it in the universe. Well, I was actually thinking craft services for yeah, those Twinkies. Yeah. Whatever uh, you want. Yes. You have, you know. I but love we, it. Yeah, we're aware this is this is not a five or ten million dollar film simply because it is a period piece complete with cars and costuming and uh, music and the music, the music catalog. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. yeah. So let's um, we, we have another segment called Let's Talk Tech. So what is one piece of terminology or a concept that a someone who is not a filmmaker or not a screenwriter, they hear that word and they, they may not know what it means, but it's something that you use? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm sorry to stump you because we've been telling everybody else ahead of time. We're going to ask you this. Like, what, mm -hmm. what would you say? I don't know. 
In terms of like... Uh, it could be anything. Um, it could be in terms of writing. It could be in terms of production. It could be in terms of fundraising. I mean, anything. So just a tech term. In, yeah, in, tech in term. World. And even te tech might sound too kind of formal for it too. So, well, mm -hmm. do you want to give I'm, I'm like, I'm still thinking. I'm like, I, I, so. can, I can say this and I... And it, so this is for the writers in the house. Yes, the writers thank the you. The yes, house. yes. Um, when we talk about enough white on the page, mm. that's a real nice. specific thing because you know, as a black person, you're like, oh, what are you talking about? I'm not a bunch of white people in my life. <laughs> Damn, you know, what are you thinking? But what we mean is, we need to not have our eyes blur over because there's such big chunks of description or dialogue. And so, you know, I always tell people and, and writers and filmmakers, every draft you write is for a different purpose, right? And so sometimes once you know, I'm going to be rewriting this a lot, you can make peace with that and not suffer from perfection and feel like mm -hmm. it's got to be perfect because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a collaborative Just thing. Get it out, It's going to change. Mm -hmm. But I think the to understand that if your goal of your draft is to get that uh, executive interested, then you want to make the read easy for them, which means you gonna kill your darlings. You wrote this beautiful piece. You wrote this beautiful dialogue and you described it beautiful. Now the question is, can you get that six line action line to three and still keep your voice? That's what I mean by you have to kill the darling sometimes, and but find it again. And yes. and is is the dialogue telling us something we can see? If we can see it, unless it's a plot point, we don't need to hear it, but we can feel it. You know, it takes a while to get to that. So that that's some that's some advice specifically, um, not just for submitting. You know, whether a production studio or agent is going to read it. I would say when you're submitting to fellowships and competitions, that stuff is really important because you don't know who's reading the work. And not everybody has the patience or the care just because they're doing the job. They're professional, you, but yeah, they don't but the, make, mm, come on. Because you're not going to like every story you read as a reader. No, it may not speak to you. But if it's a page turner, if at the bottom of the page, someone said to me recently, you want at the bottom of the page to invite them to continue. If you yeah. keep that in the back of your mind, it'll help you tweak, you know, what you're putting on the page. Thank you so much, Letitia and Creighton. We wish you so much luck with Hound Dog. Put it in the universe. Get, uh, get, let's get you 45 million. If you start at 20, go, let's go 45. <laughs> Thank you for being on Sister Brunch. We look forward to supporting you and following you on this journey. This is Letitia Guillory. And Creighton Roby. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to Sister Brunch Podcast. Podcast.